My name is Mike Dragon, and I'm a missionary with One Mission Society. I'm the International Director for Every Community for Christ, which is a department of One Mission Society focused on church multiplication training around the world. I work at headquarters, which is in Greenwood, Indiana, but probably about mm, four months out of the year, I'm not here. I'm somewhere around the world in another country that we serve in, of which we now have ministry in 52 countries. I started with Every Community for Christ in 2007 after a two-year stint with uh, Men for Missions. So I started with a heart for missions on short-term trips, um, building things with my dad, and it grew into um, wanting to do something with Men for Missions, and then an opportunity arose for me to move over to Every Community for Christ, and I've been with them for 11 years. A typical week could be one of um, three things. Either I'm not here, <laughs> I'm here in meetings most of the day, or I'm in and out most of the week attending other meetings or doing trainings. The thing that I would say is not so much countries but regions. Uh, the Europe region is a very hard uh, place because of postmodern thinking. So our, our missionaries and our work there is very small and it's not uh, as fruitful in the terms of a, a lot of growth, but it does, it does have growth. Uh, if I move over to Africa, it's uh, a harvest field uh, where we're having many come to know Christ, but we also have a major tension with uh, Christianity and Islam. And so there's a lot of spiritual warfare going on in the region of Africa. A lot of fruit, but a lot of tension as the, um, as the missionaries from Islam are coming to the south and we're trying to see what they're doing. Uh, move over to South America, Central America, another great long-term investment by um, One Mission Society and by us, and we have a lot of growth in uh, Colombia, and they have uh, learned things that uh, they are applying to help our ministry partners in Mexico, and in Ecuador, Peru, and um, Haiti, and also in um, the Cuba. And so that's a, a, a good positive, there's a lot of fruit there. Um, then I go over to Asia where uh, my wife Pat and I have served in a lot of different ways, uh, more so the last few years, and that is a very uh, oppressive kind of countries there because many of the countries in Asia are wanting to become nationalistic in their religion. So you have the, the Indians wanting to be Hindu, you have uh, Myanmar wanting to be Buddhist, you have the Muslim countries wanting to be Muslim countries. Um, and now we see a lot of oppression even in the, the country of uh, China and uh, North Korea. And so we are very concerned about Asia, but yet uh, it also represents the biggest uh, opportunity because half the world lives in that part. Of it. A couple of challenges are in ministry that needs to be um, amended in terms of what we do and how we do it. And so I've had to have some very difficult discussions with some of our ministry leaders to say that things are not working or they're not working well, but what are we going to do better together? And so that's one area. Another area is just the whole, wow, just, the Lord's really working here. What are we going to do? We don't have enough people. We don't have enough resources. How are we going to reach all these opportunities? And so that becomes a different kind of a challenge, a positive challenge. And at the same time, uh, what do you do? How do you get more people? We need more people that are willing to sacrifice going and uh, getting involved in missions. A follow-up to a training we did in 2016. And we cast the Billion Dot Global Vision for One Mission Society. So we want to see a billion people reach for Jesus in 10 years. And so India has over a billion people, so that's one of the first places we started. And we went there, we trained uh, 4,800 people in two days to go out and plant churches. And then we came behind them with some follow-up training. And our goal was to have, by the end of 2017, 10,000 new house churches planted in India. And so we worked hard with our partner, we worked hard with our training, and we slipped a little bit 
past the end of 2017, but at the end of March of 2018, reported over 11,387 house churches planted in India. So now there again, we have a big opportunity, a lot of fruit, but how do you keep up with 11,000 new house church leaders that you have to train and keep on track? So there again, we just need more people to help us. That's probably one of our biggest victories. Probably the funniest story I can think of is we always talk about the sights, the sounds, and the smells. Well, there was a time that I was at a particular um, dinner, and uh, I asked my uh, coordinator to order me something. I said, not too hot. He said, oh, no problem, no problem. So I get a bowl, and it's a bowl of noodles. I think, well, this looks pretty drab. And he says, now take your chopsticks, and you just start rolling it in a meat sauce that's down below. And so you're rolling and rolling and rolling. And these noodles, now remember you're eating with chopsticks and these noodles are about this long. And so I said, well, well, how do you pick it up and eat it? And so he demonstrated. And so he puts it up and he just slurps as loud as he can. And he's sucking these noodles. And I said, okay, what are you doing? And so I imitated what he did. And I started sucking those noodles and I was like, ah. I, I can't feel my whip. What happened? <laughs> my whip, they're numb. I just went to the dentist. He, he goes, oh, that's the numbing pepper in the meat sauce. <laughs> and so I said, that's that wonderful. <laughs> and that was probably one of the best laughs he had with watching me eat the numbing peppers on the, on the noodles. So that was probably one of my best ones. Where I see it advancing is where the Holy Spirit is guiding us with our partners. Now, I do a lot of work through partners because many of the countries we can't have resident missionaries. And so that's why we go itinerantly, we do training. But he's raising up uh, just a generation of leaders that, that put me to shame, put us to shame. And these men and women, uh, both, are making sacrifices that many of us would not be willing to make. They have hard lives, but they have such joy. And so I'm seeing both transformation in individual lives and leaders. I'm seeing families change. I'm seeing communities change. And in some places, even the whole country is being impacted by uh, their faith and what they're doing. And so for me, to not have any fear to arrive in a Muslim country, to be picked up by our friends, and to go and train and have the opportunity to share with them just how more effective uh, they can be because they have some training. And to step back 90 days later, six months later, whatever it is, and see all the fruit that they report. I, I didn't do it, they did. When I was a little boy, I would sit in my grandfather's basement because that's where all his National Geographics were. And I would live vicariously through reading those magazines around all the world. And I, in my heart, I said, someday I want to go see the world. And so I did it through National Geographic for many years. And then uh, I thought for a while that Pat and I would be called to be missionaries in a, a country. And we pursued that for many years and never got a yes. And it's so uh, fulfilling to see in this season of our life that God has called me to the world. And I don't know which month I'm going to be in which part. But I am seeing the world, and I get to see firsthand what God is doing around the world. And then I get to see how leaders are challenging the spiritual battles they face, but also the culture they face. And so it's just a joy to see how God has developed in our hearts a heart for the world. And I learned that. I learned that at work. The church with the world on its heart. I've never forgotten that. I would probably start with where are you pursuing God right where you are? Are you sharing your faith with others? Are you learning how to share your faith with others? Uh, for many, many decades, not years, but decades, um, we took the approach we're a missionary where we are first. Where are we planted? If you can't do it where you are, just going across to another country another culture does not make you effective. It does not open the door for you. I would also say is that the, the Lord has a way of putting people in your life. Ask for him to put those people in your life, to give you advice, to give you insights, and what's really going on in a certain country. 
I know recently um, I had the joy of being in Korea to find out what are the opportunities for someone from your church to possibly go there. And it was such a joy just to find out not only the opportunities, but then to connect the missionaries that are there with someone from your church. And it's like, that's the way I see God moving. He just connects us all. And then you wake up one night, he's calling me over there, I better go. And be obedient when he calls you. I oversee a, a team uh, that is very passionate in what we do. And so we're not only training, but we're developing the materials. Uh, right now we have uh, over 23 language projects where we're translating our materials in different languages. And so the great joy is they say, oh, we got one done so we can deliver that material in their heart language instead of having a translator do it all the time. That's one joy. But the biggest joy is seeing the people that I work with, to serve them, and to serve them uh, in a way that's multi-generational. There's some my age, but we, I've got s some young millennials that are on our team, and I've just been really challenged in saying, well, how do we get multiple generations all focused on the same passion of, of seeing the world come to know Christ? And so that's been one of my challenges, but it's been one of my joys to see how we can work better together, even though there's multiple generations represented. When I became the international director on April 1st, I had a number of people come to me and say, uh, we know this is new to you uh, as far as position, but you're the right person for this season. And that was a great encouragement because um, I'm a layman. And so I replaced a man that's a very gifted man in theology, in vision, passionate about that. And it's just great to see that laymen can have a part in this, this journey that we're all on. But I, that's what we're working on now, is it? how do we get more laity involved in the Great Commission? Uh, there's not enough clergy to do the work, and we need more lay people. I would just say that my joy is seeing other people seeing that, well, if God could use just this little guy from Terre Haute, Indiana, who worked for a contractor as a kid, he can use anybody but you have to be obedient in following his leading. With this new position comes new responsibilities, so I need a lot of wisdom right now. A lot of wisdom to keep not only things on track, but I have some uh, decisions that I need to make on a regular basis that impact uh, not only people's lives, but people's livelihood. And so that becomes very difficult at times, and I want to make sure that I'm wise I also want to be able to be discerning. Where is the Holy Spirit leading us? Where is He guiding us? Where are we going to open new fields? And where are we going to stop some things because we're done there? It's not that we're done with the gospel, it's just they are capable of doing it. They don't need our help anymore. And that's a really hard one because we have a long-term relationship with some of these folks. The other one is just um, balance in life. As you can imagine, um, you know, flying around and doing all those things. Um, in my season, uh, my commitment is to do as long as I can do it physically. Um, but sometimes it's not the physical side, it's the emotional side. Emotional of seeing um, the heartbreak of things that went wrong, or the heartbreak of seeing a leader uh, fall from grace. And then the other emotional part is just reconnecting with people that you love. And so um, just a balance of that. And my relationship with the Lord is very important. And so. Uh, I want to make sure I have time for him too. Probably the thing that I'm most excited about is that growing up at World Gospel, there was a DNA for global missions. And just in the last uh, couple of years, it appears to me that uh, that DNA is taking on uh, the next season. And so there's not a lot you can do for me, but there is a lot you can do for the kingdom. That is making sure that as you're developing the interests in missions uh, across the church, that you're also making sure that people are using their gifts well and that they are not intimidated by faith-based missions. Say, oh, I don't like raising my own support. I, that's too selfish and things like that. If God is calling you into serving Him, I don't know about you, but my God supplies all of my needs.